Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought I'd take the opportunity to do an updated video on the Tesla Solar Glass Roof version 3. A lot of new information has come about over the last couple months, more so in just the last couple weeks, thanks to so many homeowners posting videos about their experience with Tesla and the product itself. These people have really helped shine some light on the product that wasn't easily accessible to companies like myself. The main reason why my first video on the Tesla Solar Graph roof came off a bit aggressive was because I had some preliminary information from what I believe to be a creditable source that made the product appear really shitty. I mean, honestly. And it really made me feel like Tesla was misleading consumers with their solar glass roof. And it really aggravated me because of that. Now, I do apologize about that, but I'm not saying the video is going to make Tesla's solar glass roof look amazing in this one either, but I am going to really focus on some key things. Now, I still don't think it's groundbreaking. There's some clear disadvantages that the Tesla solar glass roof has and they need to hopefully overcome. I want to talk to you about these advantages it does have, but also the disadvantages because it's important for you to understand how Tesla solar glass stacks up against a traditional solar system that you can get today. Spoiler alert, I think Tesla will be able to overcome these disadvantages in the future. I don't think it's gonna be in the very near future, but maybe in the course of the next five to 10 years. But I'm only gonna talk about what we have available right now. So I'm not gonna be talking about or speculating if they really will be able to overcome things. Now, before I dive in, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you find this video helpful in your research for solar energy, please give this video a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Okay, so before I talk about the Tesla solar roof, I wanna talk briefly on current solar technology. I think this is important because it helps us have a foundation for the solar market as it is right now. Today, we have solar panels that are connected to either optimizers and then a central inverter or microinverters where each panel has its own optimizer slash inverter. It's basically an all-in-one. For the sake of simplicity, I'm really only going to focus on solar panels connected to microinverters like the Enphase Energy ones. There are multiple advantages to this technology. It's taken many years for this technology to reach this level. So we're getting shade optimization with microinverters, string optimization with microinverters, module level monitoring, performance and warranty monitoring. So that way you can make claims if you're systems not working properly and servicing of the system it really simplifies it for not just consumers but for installers with this technology each panel acts on its own terms not interfering with others this means one panel or microinverter stops working or is underperforming the rest continue to produce the most power they possibly can based upon their tilt orientation and other variables if a panel or microinverter that's underperforming or not working needs to be replaced, we literally can see this in the monitoring portal and schedule for a single technician. We only need one person to come out and service the defective component. This is what we offer all our customers right now when they request a quote from us. And this is what thousands of other solar companies offer their customers too. These are the key advantages of a traditional solar system that you can get today with the biggest first world disadvantage being the look of what some solar panels have. But regardless, this is important when we start to talk about the Tesla solar glass roof next. What you may not know is the Tesla solar glass roof is referred to in the industry as a building integrated photovoltaic system or BIPV and photovoltaic just is a longer term for solar and all that means is it's a component with solar integrated into the building material itself which in Tesla's case is the roof tile now building integrated solar products have been around for several years heck 
In my previous video, I was holding a solar tile manufactured nearly 10 years ago by some random company and they're not the only one in the industry. So the Tesla solar glass isn't something new in regards to a concept, but what is new is its appearance. Tesla has given it, which is very sleek and aesthetically pleasing. I'm not going to argue with that. No other building integrated solar system out there looks anywhere near as nice as the Tesla Solar Glass. But that's kind of the only significant difference between this Tesla Solar Glass and other building integrated solar systems. I will say though that Tesla did develop a rather clever method for installing the Solar Glass systems. They have interlocking hinges that allow roofers and installers like us to keep a row lifted while they're connecting the solar glass tiles together, so for each row above, and performing wire management, because that's important. I haven't seen anything else in the industry like that, and I'm sure this is one of the main reasons the solar glass system from Tesla has taken so long to actually release. They needed to simplify its method of installation without affecting its integrity or strength against harsh winds or other elements. And I think they accomplished that, thus the rollout of version three. So those are the advantages the Tesla solar glass roof has, at least in my opinion. It's really nice looking and has a great method of installation. But the disadvantages to me outweigh these two things. Now again, it's my opinion and no, I'm not going to even bring up price. That's not relevant. I just want to focus on the technology here. I mean, the point in going solar was, and to me still is, to reduce your carbon footprint. Stop the destruction of the planet from gases, coal, and oil. And I just don't think the Tesla Solar Glass helps in this area as much as traditional solar panels do. And I'm saying as much. I'm not saying it doesn't at all. It just doesn't do it as well. But let's give Tesla the benefit of the doubt and assume they are able to overcome these disadvantages. So what are these? Well, first up, power output. Each solar glass tile provides 58.5 watts. In my first video on the Tesla solar glass, the information I had at the time was on a model that only produced 25 watts. So I did include that link to the article for you to confirm. There's clear photos of this. So something was obviously changed since that video. And like I said, I included a link to the article so you can see what I was basing my information on. One thing I should have done, but I didn't in my previous video was actually look up the spec sheet on the California Energy website. All solar products need to be approved by the state before they can be installed on your home. The state of California wants to make sure they meet or exceed specific codes and ratings. I included a link to this website as well in the description below so you can see everything on the Tesla Solar Glass roof version. Heck, Tesla even has their version 2 and version 1 available in that sheet. Anyways, the whole point I was trying to get at was the wattage per tile being very low, thus requiring more surface space to produce actual energy. I understand you can install it on your whole roof, but that's not necessarily true. There are still setback requirements depending on where you live and sections of the roof, you just won't be able to install the solar glass tiles at all because they come in certain sizes. They make one size for the solar glass roof. And that's what I've been seeing, which is probably due to manufacturing difficulties if you were going to have various sizes and dimensions. And this is something that would add costs and complicate the system design along with the installation itself. So Tesla is smart for keeping it simple and really only offering one size for the solar system tiles. And then having these false tiles that get installed in areas where the Tesla solar glass wouldn't be. Now I've seen multiple videos from people that have shared their solar glass roof design from Tesla. The areas they show where the actual solar glass is being installed are very similar to locations we'd actually install traditional solar panels. This wouldn't be a problem if the solar glass tiles had higher wattage and efficiency ratings. Remember, each tile is only 58.5 watts and the efficiency rating is somewhere between eight to 12%. We're not 100% sure because we don't know the exact 
dimensions of the solar cells themselves, and that's how you determine an efficiency rating. Just talking in scenarios, if you have a section of your home that can fit 20 solar glass tiles, that's a total of 1.17 kilowatts. By contrast, that same area could fit five solar panels. Well, guess what? The industry standard wattage right now for a traditional solar panel is 330 watts, giving you 1.65 kilowatts for the same area. That's 40% more from the same area. Plus, the efficiency for most 330 watt modules right now is somewhere between 18 to 20%, which is more than double of the Tesla Solar Glass. This is a significant disadvantage of the solar glass in my opinion, but all building integrated solar systems struggle here. So there's really no reason to give them, um, to give Tesla crap because they all seem to hit this limit or maximum efficiency at eight to 12% and a wattage between 50 and 80 watts per tile. So Tesla really wasn't able to do anything more than what these other building integrated products have. But it's important for you to know that when you combine low wattage per square footage with low efficiency, you end up with weird things like a 10.59 kilowatt solar glass system that'll only produce an estimated 13,000 kilowatt hours per year, very low. And this is because you're limited by the roof space, what the technology can achieve. By contrast, a normal microinverter solar system of equal size would produce upwards of 17,000 kilowatt hours per year. That's an extra 4,000 kilowatt hours of usable energy, of energy offset from carbon emissions. Now setting the power output and efficiency aside, there's another disadvantage the Tesla Solar Glass has and all building integrated solar system have for that matter. And it's probably the biggest reason why it hasn't become a mainstream product until Tesla, I guess. And that's the module level optimization and performance monitoring. See, building integrated solar systems are like traditional solar systems, or I should say old school solar systems that we installed 10 plus years ago. We connected solar panels in series, which basically created one large solar panel and then connected them to an MPPT input in the central inverter. There were no optimizers, there's no microinverters. The problem that occurs with this is MPPT style design is production decreases. This has to do with the panels behaving as one large solar panel. So when one in the series experiences shading or has some performance issues, it will affect all of the solar panels and this will carry over to the solar glass system because that's how they work. This is why Enphase microinverters have literally dominated the market in the last five years because this is no longer an issue. And same goes for solar edge systems and SMA systems that have optimizers. I've seen several videos of people having posted on YouTube of their solar glass production inside the Tesla app. And it's a very wavy, inconsistent energy production because every cloud that passes over and every vent pipe that gives off a little shade throughout the day and every bird dropping that lands on the roof decreases the system's overall production. So instead of producing, say, 13,000 kilowatt hours per year, maybe you only actually produce 12 or 11 kilowatt hours per year, thousands of course. I'm not saying you shouldn't buy the Tesla solar glass roof, but really consider and understand this product isn't revolutionary. The building integrated solar system market has been around longer than Tesla has. The only significant thing that Tesla has brought to the table is appearance and its name. Other than that, these are your run of the mill Chinese polycrystalline solar panels. Are these things Tesla can overcome for disadvantages? Sure, maybe. It's hard to say if they're working towards that. They did just come out with their own solar inverter, which looks to be focused for the solar glass. And again, it's a central inverter. So it doesn't look like they're working towards microinverter technology or even optimized technology. While I don't believe Tesla brought something revolutionary to the building integrated solar sector, they definitely got your interest in this technology and that helps improve the technology. So I give them credit 
for that with the solar glass. And maybe Tesla can solve the disadvantages I brought up in this video, but these were just the key issues I have. And there are several more like degradation and performance. And what about servicing the system or future expansions? I'm glad people are sharing their solar glass roof information online because this will help companies determine if there is a future in building integrated solar systems. Who knows? Maybe the next solar advancements are these niche sectors, but time will tell. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. I really hope you found the information I provided helpful and not biased. I'm trying to just educate you as a consumer on the product and compare it to what's available today for a nice solar system. So if you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Thanks again. Until next time.